Hey you guys, today I wanted to do a video on how to, how I like to make chunky knit blankets, like hand knit chunky blankets. Kind of like a do it yourself video and that's what I decided to give my entire family this year. Everybody is getting a blanket, like a chunky knit blanket that I've made. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through how I like to make the blankets. I'll give you guys like a step by step tutorial kind of thing. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of the 12 days of Christmas. I want to try and figure out how to set up the camera so that I can show you how I make my blanket. I'm kind of like crouched right now. This is my couch back here and I'm like just squatting in front of it right now. Let's just go ahead and get started. I don't know what I'm doing in this video honestly you guys. I This is not my forte. I'll probably actually finish this video on a different day because I don't think I will have the knit finished in time. But before I go into like the pattern and stuff that I do, let's just talk about the knits. This one I'm actually gonna give to my parents for Christmas. I also knitted this pink one for my sister, my younger sister. This gray one right here for the other sister. And now I wanna make this like misty green one for the last sister. The yarn I picked up and we'll be using in this video, I picked it up actually on yarn Canada.ca or CanadaYarn.ca. One of those. I will have the website linked below. I picked up the Bernat blanket yarn. It comes with 220 yards of yarn or 200 meters. This yarn I wouldn't actually recommend because it's really not thick enough. If you're trying to get one of those really big knit blankets, this is definitely not thick thick enough. I didn't know what I was doing. I ordered this online and this is what I ended up with, but I found a way to make it work so that it looks a little bit more chunky. And basically what I do is I use two strands at a time. It gets a little bit confusing because you do have two strands, but I feel like when I use two, it just makes it a little bit chunkier. Like I said, this comes with 220 yards and I do use four of these balls. The yarn is like chenille. It's a very soft. I hope I covered everything. So I am going to show you guys the stitching now. Okay, so what you wanna do is start by grabbing two strands of wool and you're gonna want to combine them like this and then just create a loop knot. So I kind of pull about this much yarn and then I will loop around here and I will create this loop knot like this. You kind of wanna be able to have two fingers through the loop. So that's kind of my standard. That's what I figured out works the best. So once you have that loop knot done, you're going to want to take your fingers and pull the working yarn through that loop. And you keep doing this for as many loops as you want. For my size of blanket choice, I find 45 is the best. So I'm gonna continue doing 45 of these loops. So just to show you again, here is the first loop that we created with the loop knot. I'm pulling the working yarn through it to make the second loop. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I have a row of 45 loops. So I now have 44 loops going all the way down. I'm going to create one more loop, so that's 45. And then to start the next row, you need to do another loop. So I'm gonna pull the yarn through this loop. So that was 46. Once you've done the 46th loop, you're going to turn the blanket, like kind of flip it like this, so you pull it to the other side. Now with my fingers through that 46th loop, start the next row, I'm going to take my fingers and find the second loop in the row. Not this loop that the yarn is going through right now, but this loop right here. That's what I mean, it's kind of hard when you have the double yarn, but it's basically not this first loop that the working yarn is um, getting looped through, it's the second loop right here. So I'm going to go with my fingers through that second loop and I'm going to grab the working yarn and pull it through that second loop. I'm just going to show you again. This was the 46th loop that my fingers are going through. I'm going to go through the second loop right there. So not this one, but this one. And I'm going to take my fingers and pull through the working yarn through that second loop. So now I have two loops around my fingers. And then to keep going, I'm going to now take the working yarn through both of these loops. Now I end up with just one loop again through my fingers. Now with this loop, I'm going to find the next loop to pull through. So it's not this one right here, it's going to be this one right here. It's kind of hard to find. I actually always struggled with the first row, 
but it's basically not this one where your yarn is going through, but the second one here. I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna go through this yarn, this loop, and I'm gonna pull the working yarn through it just once so that I have two loops around my fingers. Again, pull the working yarn through both of those two loops. Now I have just one loop on my finger again, and it looks really weird at first, but I promise it will look great once you start going. I'm gonna keep doing this for the entire row, so you should be going through 45 loops. The thing is, now that you've created the first row and you've counted through it, you actually don't need to keep counting because it's pretty hard to miss a loop since they're all kind of like laid out here. I'm nearing the end, so just popping back on camera to show you guys. Just so you know, if you've twisted the first yarn, like the piece of yarn that you started with all the loops, if you accidentally twisted that and went through the wrong loop, it honestly does not matter unless you are giving this to somebody who is an expert at crocheting who really cannot tell. I'm gonna finish off the last couple of loops here and then I'll show you how to create the third row. And I swear the hardest row is this first row. Like I hate doing this first like loopy row thing, but from this point on, it gets so much easier and this ends up being extremely, extremely relaxing. I will be crocheting these blankets while I am watching TV. It's very, very like soothing and therapeutic, I think. We have two loops left. So I'm gonna go through the second last one. Pull through, we got the two loops. Pull that through. Then I'm going to go through the last loop. You have your fingers through the two loops right now. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the working yarn through both of those loops. Now that this is the end of the row, to create the next row, you are going to take your fingers, pull the working yarn through the loop, like the single loop, one more time. You have to do this in order to start the next row, otherwise it's going to look a little bit skewed. So again, just to show you, I'll just redo this. This is my loop, this is the final loop of the first row. I'm going to pull the working yarn through it once. We have that two loop business going on. I'm gonna take the working yarn and pull it through both of those loops. So now we have a single loop here and then I'm going to pull the working yarn through it one more time. So now what you wanna do is take this whole uh, two rows that you've created and flip it so that it goes to the other side. And like I mentioned, it gets easier from this point onward. So I have my working yarn over here. I have this loop, I pulled the braided row to this side. And what you wanna do is find the first loop. It's a little easier to find now because the row is so big, but if you're looking, if you pull this kind of taut, you will see that there is a hole and that's where you want to start. That's my first loop. So I'm gonna put my fingers through that first hole. I'm going to pull the working yarn through that first loop. And now I again have two loops around my fingers. And I'm going to take the working yarn and pull it through both of those loops. And this will be the third row. It's a little easier now to see, but you're going to pull like your blanket a little bit taut. You're gonna look for the next loop. So here's the first hole and here is the second hole. There should be two loops on the top here, if you can tell. There's like this loop and then there's this loop. Pull the working yarn through it once. Have those two loops, you always need to have at first the two loops around your fingers and then you're going to take the working yarn and pull it through. And you can see it's starting to form that chunky knit blanket that we love. I am nearing now the end of the row. I have two loops left to do. So I'm gonna take it through this loop once, have the double, pull through both. And then again, we have the final loop. You start getting really used to finding the loops after a while, but it's right there. That's the final loop. So I'm gonna put my fingers through it, pull through once, grab both of them around my finger, and then pull through both of them. And then same as before, to start the next row, after I've done that, I'm just going to pull through once and it kind of restarts it with a new loop. That's like two rows done. The tighter you do your loops, the smaller the holes. I kind of don't mind the holes. If your yarn is chunkier, these holes will be non-existent. But um, I don't know, I kind of think it looks cool. So now that I have this done, I'm gonna flip it so that it comes onto the other side. And again, you have now a new loop, well the same loop. I kind of like just 
rework it so that my fingers go through the other way. And you're gonna start on the next row. So again, it's just like restarting it as normal. Pull through once, pull through both. And then you can just keep going. And you can tell it's lining up really nicely on the side so you know that you did not skip any loops. Like I said, it's pretty hard to skip a loop because you're kind of just following the pattern here. But I mean, if you do, you can always really easily pull apart and find out where you missed. Anyway, that's pretty much how I do the blanket. I wanna keep doing this and then I can show you guys the finished result at the end. You need to add on a new yarn, like a new roll of yarn. You can just tie the ends together. The knot disappears in the chunky knit, which is really uh, convenient and super easy. Okay, so we are at the end of the blanket. I'm going to go through this final loop. Through that, pull the thread through so that I have the two loops and then I'm going to pull through it a single time. And then what I like to do here to end it off is kind of like make a knot. I wanna pull through a single loop and pull it all the way through so that it has a knot. You can end it however way you'd like, but I just find pulling it through is the way I like to do it. And then I will just tie like a regular knot Make sure that the blanket doesn't unravel. Just like one regular knot. And you can even make it a little bit more secure. Like I don't think the blanket will unravel, but you can like tie around the loop like this. Like pull one of the yarns through just cause we have a double yarn anyway. And then just create a single knot here as well. Whatever way you'd like to end the blanket, it's totally up to you. But then that's kind of it. Like that's how the blanket will end. So you can either take these strands and like kind of weave them through. I want to chop them a little bit shorter. I don't really need them to be that long. So I'm probably going to just chop them like right here. And then with these strands, you can kind of just weave them through and they kind of disappear into the yarn and you can't even see it. So that's the blanket complete. It's this really pretty like misty green color. I ended up doing about 52 rows. I don't know why I got a weird number. I think it was just the length of the yarn that I had that I was using. So I got about 52 rows and like I mentioned it was um, across 45. So it's kind of like a square almost. So this is the full blanket complete. It is kind of a square. I wish I had made it a little bit bigger. Probably done like 60 rows. I'm definitely gonna make one for myself. But yeah, this is the final blanket. That sums up this video. I can't wait to give my sisters and my parents these blankets. Honestly, the yarn from Canada Yarn was not that expensive. I think I spent in total, each of these blankets, when I add it all up and divide it, is around $40. So not the cheapest, I guess, but you can't really find chunky knits like this that I don't feel like you can find them that often. For 40 bucks, I feel like this is a really good present. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I will leave everything on the screen, all of the information. Please subscribe if you would like to see more videos and I will see you tomorrow.